So now that we have finished the installation of W Prism, we'll start with our formula to the tool. In fact, we'll start with our first project that we are going to get into. So our first project is automating a Windows-based application. So I have a Windows-based application here called SAT. So this is a Windows based application that I want to automate on. Today we'll just see how to automate the login functionality. So let us say that I am launching this application. Then I am logging into this application. So we'll just see how we can automate the, just the login component of this particular tool or this particular Windows application. And what are the challenges we have while we are performing this approach? All right, guys. So, I know that we talked a little bit about process and object last time. Process is where you write your business decisions, you write your business logic. Object is where you write or you automate the task against an application. Right. What I am trying to do is I am trying to automate a Windows based application. So I should create an object instead of a process. Okay. So I have a process studio here. I have my object studio here. So what I want to do is I want to create an object. So to create an object, right click on those objects and choose create object. I will give the name of the object as first class, first project. I already have that name. I just put it on the first screen. So the way you look at it, this is how the object looks like by people who are watching it for the first time. See my steps that I want to automate is I want to launch that Windows application. I want to fill in my username. I want to fill in my password. I want to choose the value from the drop down and I want to click on the login button. These are the steps that I want to perform using Blue Prism. Okay, so my first step is to launch that application. So in order to launch the application, I need to define to the Blue Prism where that application resides, where the .exe of that application is present. Currently, I know that it's present on the desktop, but my Blue Prism does not know that. So my first step is to specify where the .exe of the application is present, okay? So where do I specify that is in the application modeler? Open application modeler. Specify what is the name of the application. My application name is SCP. My Windows application. Next. Specify what kind of application that I am trying to automate. It, uh, so, currently I want to automate Windows application, but, uh, but, but apart from Windows, you see your browser base, you see my friends, you see Java. What does it mean? It means that my Blue Prism is able to automate any of these applications. 
on just Windows based, but the browser based Java mainframes. In fact, it can even automate uh, Citrix based applications, SAP application, all that as well. I choose next. My application is launched from an exact executable file exactly. This is where I need to specify the path of the .exe, the Windows application.exe file. So I click on browse and go to desktop. Surface automation training. This is my application. So click open. We will specify the path of where the SAT.exe is present. So I click on next. You can ignore this for now. I click on next, 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 and then finish. The moment I click on finish, that means no, Google doesn't know where the .exe of the test is present and then click on this launch button. Automatically, that application opens. Similarly, any .exe, not just this, you can open Internet Explorer, right? explore.exe, Chrome. Any .exe should be specified in the Google Prism application model in order to launch it automatically. Yes. Now that I have integrated it, let us start writing our code. My first step is to launch that application as simple as that. So before you perform any tasks on that application, you first have to launch it, right? To launch an application, we have a stage called Navigate Stage. To your left side is a panel which contains all the stages. This is what that helps you to write your code for people who are coming for the first time. So this is, these are the stages we'll be using to start writing our code. So navigate stage is where you can perform any application related actions. Like if you want to close an application, launch an application, maximize, minimize, all that will be present in your navigate stage itself. Next. Find and drop in the agit stage. Then we have launch. So I'm choosing launch action on the SAT application. Simple as that. So what am I doing here? Launch SAT. Start. You launch your SAT application and then you enter. So when you click on reset and run, you start. You launch your SAT application. My second step is to type the username onto my application, onto the username text box. Currently, where is my cursor present? On the username text box itself. So the moment I start typing, my username text box gets filled. Because my cursor is already present on the username text box. So even the Blue Prism also has to send in the keystrokes to that application. What keystrokes? The username keystrokes. So that it automatically starts stepping into the username text box. All I have to do is send the username keystrokes to that application. The cursor is already present in the username text box by default. The moment the application launches.
to send keystrokes to that application, we have in the navigate stage itself an option called global send keys. Double click on the navigate stage. Again, drag and drop the SAT because I want to perform the keystrokes of action on the SAT application itself. So drag and drop the SAT application. And from the drop down, choose global send keys. The global send keys will send the keystrokes to that application. Whatever you want to type, it will start typing it there. It will send the keys. Now, what do you want to type should be written in here. Link again, quick start, launch a city, type username and if I click reset and then run, we start, you launch your SAT application, you type the username. My next task is to write my password. Now, how do I type in my password? My cursor is still present in the username text box. So, my cursor should shift from the text box to another text box. So when I press on the tab button, my cursor changes its position. Now I can give in my password. So what I need to do, two, two actions. The first action is I need to press the tab. The second action is I need to pass the password into, as a send key strokes. So to press the tab, tab is a command. So it's not a word, it's a command that we So these are the command tab word waiting back. So you launch your SAT application, you type in your username. Next step is to press the tab button. So drag and drop another navigate stage. Double click on it. What you want to do? You need to press the tab button on your SAT application. Or do you want to send the tab command? So drag and drop SAT from the list of actions. Choose global send keys. And then in the text, give the command. Simple. What am I doing? I am pressing tab. The moment I press tab, my cursor changes, changes from the username text box to password text box. So all I have to do is I have to send the keystrokes of my password. I can drop another navigate stage. What I'm doing, I'm typing password. So SAT. 
from the actions choose global send keys and then give the password so i'll be providing you a document or in fact i have shared some of the documents as if you remember out of those documents one document is there called as foundation training in the document it is present just open the document out of those documents that i have given you there is one called foundation training the document name is So these are the four documents that I have given you. If I go into the foundation training, this is the basic Blue Prism tool. Actions, everything is specified. So in here, there are not many commands. If you look at each command, is each keyboard button. So if you look at it, there are not many commands on your keyboard. Tab, caps lock, shift, control, function. Pretty much these are the commands you have. So if you so in this document, if you scroll down a bit, It's been a while since I opened these documents. So, yeah, these are the comments. This is where the comments are. So these are the comments. Not many, easy to remember. So type in your password. What is my password? My password is also admin. So let us link all of them. Slash city. Type username. Press tab. Type password. And then end it. Right, run this. Okay. My next step is again the moment I press tap, my drop down gets activated. I just need to choose what I want to log in as account, client, and patient are the three values I have on drop down. I just need to send the keys which one I want to log into. And once that is done, I press tab again. Now my login button is focused. All I do is press enter and then my application logs in. Same steps I have to replicate on the code as well. Whatever you are doing in here. So I can drop in the navigate stage. Now you type your password. Now you need to press the tab. In fact, we already have written a stage for pressing tab. So you can copy paste that. So choose pointer, select the one you want to copy, and then choose control C and control V. That's it. it creates a clone of that stage. Type password, press tab, and then choose the value from drop down. So navigate stage. Choose. So, Dragon Drop is set application, global send keys, and then when I want to choose account. So, it types account onto the drop.
you can even resize these actions to make them clear as what it is to you again i need to press tab and press enter so press tab function i'm copy pasting control c control v Finally, press enter. If you remember, as I said, the enter command is this one. So, and drag and drop another navigate stage. And this is press enter. Double, it's in the double quote within the floor presses enter yes we can create reusable uh, objects like tab navigation etc into one press enter enter Let me execute end to end. So now we have successfully created the login functionality. So when I execute this one, you start, you launch your application, admin, tab, password, tab, account, tab, enter. All clear? This is how I have automated the login functionality of the application. Do you have, do you guys have this application with you, this Windows application? So you, you can practice with me in parallel. Do you guys have the Windows application with your Surface Automation Training? This Windows application, the .exe of this application. Is there no one in session? I see. Okay, I'm sending that link to you. This, this is a drive link for that SAD application. However, you will not be able to launch it. Just give me a minute. the link for data.xml so download these two files and place these two files under the same folder only then you will be able to launch that application though stat.exe and data.xml both the files you need to download both are less than uh, 1 mb at most it's both the files you need to download and both should be present at the same location if you observe here both of my files are present on my desktop for this SAT application to launch without any problem back end the back end for this is data taxable so this also should be in the same folder just remember that okay Uh, 
right? So, there are, even though my code is running successfully now, let us get back to where we are. Even though my code is running successfully now, there are two challenges or there are in fact two major flaws in this code that I have written. This is not the correct way to write my code. Now, what are those two challenges in this code that I have written is, first challenge, application latency. Second is interactivity. Now, what are these two challenges and why they are present? We'll, we'll have a look at it. First is application latency. What if my application is slow? I am typing in the chat window because no one is responding. So I am thinking that they are not able to hear. So that is the reason why I am typing because I don't see anyone responding properly. I, I, I am intentionally typing into the chat window. I see seven people in the session, but I barely see anyone responding. That is the reason. Yes. The first is the application latency. So what if the, my application is slow? Where, where will my code wait? So I'm directly saying launch SH application and then write in my username text box. What if my application takes some somewhere around 30 to 40 seconds to launch the application? See, I can control the speed of the execution. Currently, it is set to normal. So if you click on before you click on this run button, or next to this run, run button, there is a drop down. Here you can see the execution speed or the debug speed. Currently, it is set to normal. So I can increase the speed of the execution, how the code will be executed. If I put it too fast and run it. You can see nothing happened. The application launched, but by then the code, the rest of the code also executed. What does it mean is the, we have to use some kind of delay or some kind of wait changes until that application launches, especially when you are dealing with web based application. Things tend to be so slow when you launch that URL. Sometimes, if the, if the application is heavy. So that is the first flaw. Second flaw is interactivity. Now, what does it mean is now, if I am running, let us say I am running now, my execution is happening. Suddenly my application launched and my application lost its focus. Some Windows pop-up came, update, Microsoft update, Firefox update, some update came, my application lost its focus and went to background. And because of that, my cursor is no longer present on the text box. And nothing happened as you can see. The enter button I pressed, went on to that Microsoft pop-up and then my Windows got updated accidentally. Right, so the way I am interacting is not correct. I am meant to write the username text box in the username. I am meant to write the username in the text box. So even though cursor is present or not, even though application is in focus or not, my username should be written automatically onto the text box. I need to insert the value, not type it randomly. It's hoping that cursor is present. The way I am interacting with the application is not the correct way. And someone also has dropped in a question that how do we know it's executed successfully? Exactly. Now I can look at my screen and say it's executed successfully. But if I place it in a server and when I'm executing, what is the validation I am doing, doing that it has logged in successfully? What if there is a wrong password? Now here I have given admin and admin. Intentionally let us say that uh, there is a type and I have given admin. Now when I execute this one, What happens? It types in the username password, wrong password. You can see only four letters got typed. Types when presses enter, it says wrong password. But my code says completed. 
because I am not using any validations before or after whether it has launched successfully, whether it has logged in successfully, it is blindly performing those steps and completing. So these are the flaws that are present in my current code. So in tomorrow's class, what we will see is how do we overcome this? There is one more another major challenge is that is the control breach. I have sensitive information in my code. What is that sensitive information? The password I have directly written in my code. So whoever has my code will be able to know the password as well. I have to I have to sensitively so somewhere securely store this password, encrypt it probably, and then start utilizing it in my code. My password should not be seen directly like that. So there are so many flaws in the code that we have written. Tomorrow we'll be trying to rectify all these issues. Anyone has any questions? Uh, yeah, James. Uh, sorry, I was not clear on the last part. Like where you said, uh, for example, if there is any Windows update or anything, like I was not clear over there. I, I didn't understand that. Okay. So let me execute this one again. My, my program is running. It logs the SAT. It's typing the same. Suddenly, my, I got a Windows update pop-up. And the update pop-up came into focus. My application went into background because of it. So my cursor is lost. Until only when my application is in focus, the cursor will be present. The moment I some update comes, the focus will shift from this up window to the update window. Okay. So any any interactions I am doing will happen on that application, whichever is in focus now. Got it? Okay, yeah, yeah, I understand. So then what was the solution? We have to write that into the text box itself, whether it's in focus or it's not in focus. My code should write the value directly into the text box. Now it should not depend upon the cursor is present or not. Irrespective of the application is in focus or not, my code should write directly into the text box. Got it? Text box meaning like another notepad or what is it? My index needs to write the username into the username text box. Currently okay. I am Assuming that username text box has the cursor and I'm typing it, sending key strokes. Now I have to not write the code in that way. I have to tell, write that value directly into the username text box. If cursor is there also, no, I don't mind. If cursor is not there also, insert the value into the text box. Don't type it, don't send the key strokes, rather insert the value into oh, the text okay. box. Okay, the way we are interacting will change. So, got it? Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. anyone has any other questions? All right, guys. Practice, I gave you the tool uh, today, the link for it. Uh, and then I think we have installed the Blue Prism as well. So try to practice the same steps and see how you can. Okay. All right, then. See you in tomorrow's class.